What's up, YouTube? Graveyard Classics here today, tonight, or this morning, where the fuck time and you're watching this. This is the first time I do this type of podcast for all of you. Like uh, the YouTube channel, The Wolf Pit says, for you, the people, so you don't have to. Well, in this case, you have to. You have to listen to these motherfucking new songs of Nocturnus that I just discovered, well, like a month ago. But uh, I discovered the next one that's called The Antichamber. Like, like a couple, like, like this week or last week, it was so just uploaded. And it's one of the most promising releases of this fucking year, man. And the subject of this, of this video, first of all, is like, I wanted to like, talk my personal appreciation for the career and foundation of uh, what uh, Mike Browning is in the metal community. And I think for everybody here in the, in the, in the World Wide Web that listens to the metal show, uh, at least listen his albums and uh, and give it that shot and um, to have the respect that it deserves after all the, all these years that has been kind of like the legendary band that's still obscure, not the legendary band like Morbid Angel or Cannibal Corpse or I don't know. It's Nocturnos is that band that uh, stayed in the underground the scene in the. Um, it's like, I don't know, in trash metal, Metallica is like Cannibal Corpse for the metal, you know, and uh, Nocturnus will be the, I don't know, the the Hirax or the, I don't know, the, no, yeah, not that, it's like, they will be like the, what the fuck I'm talking about, like, who cares? It's just fucking awesome band that's obscure. I don't know. I don't have any comparison. Who gives a fuck? Fuck me, really. So and 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 I also am distracted. I'm listening on the background one of the songs from the new album coming. Also, there is a demo version of this song. is called "The Ancient Ones." Aeon of the Ancient Ones. Wow, awesome, awesome blast beats from Mike Browning, which I never hear actually Mike Browning blast beating like this, like uh, in this new new record, uh, pa Paradox, new record, is it? Paradoxes, Paradox. It's it's really like fucking awesome, all the songs, I, I, I really like it. I, I, I can compare this new uh, record uh, to the... So I don't know a bit of Vector. I don't know if you if you all have heard Vector. I believe the the band is like a bit inspired, like a bit the metal inspired in Boyboard and, and all the stuff. It's really awesome, really long songs, really complex songs. Uh, this is a bit like like that on the on the level of experimentation with the sci-fi Nocturnus. Like um, could be perfectly touring with Vector and bands like such as such, and people will enjoy and will see a fluency between like Boyboard. Nocturnus AD and uh, and fucking uh, Vector would be an awesome uh, sci-fi masterpiece of concert. The structures of the songs in this new album that is Paradox um, have evolved a bit uh, from the previous uh, departments of what Nocturnus have done in the past. And I, I say Nocturnus ID just for a signal of time. For me, this is the real Nocturnus. Uh, there is Mike Browning behind. And Mike Browning has shown that he was a creative mind behind Nocturnus with these new releases. This is, album is intended to be like Paradox. It's intended to be a sequel to the first album of Nocturnus, which is considered a masterpiece. That's the key. And in this case... It totally sounds fucking like that. And it sounds like, really, it's like now in the 90s and it comes this fucking almost unbelievably awesome album and you're like, oh, fuck. But you, you didn't expect it. Now it's 2019 and we are like, holy shit, man. This, this is deep, man. And uh, 
Okay, I, I also will tell the story of Mike Brown that I was wanting to tell, you know. I, I am just free speaking. There is no script in this shit. I'm just talking and that's it, you know. Hope you like or whatever what I'm doing. The thing with Mike Browning is he started as the original drummer for Morbid Angel. Then he switched in Morbid Angel from just the drummer to being the drummer and the vocalist as he had to uh, replace the vocalist that left in that time. And uh, then Mike Browning became one of the most important creative parts actually of uh, Morbid Angel in the for the first uh, what will become the first album. But in the cancel album, the Abominations of Desolation, that was going to be released in 1986, but was scrapped in as nobody was really content. I'm not sure who was not content. I'm not sure if uh, is the was the production, was the musicianship that was not in, on par with the expectatives. But uh, this cancellation of an album. Uh, tells a lot of what Mike Browning had to go and defines a lot the start and the uh, progression of the profession of Mike Browning as a musician. It has not been uh, easy and also he has been one of the most important figures on par with Chuck Schuldiner, on par with uh, Trey Asak Thought, in par on par with all the Bill Steer from Carcass, uh, I don't know, uh, Mick Harris from uh, Napalm Death. I would say it's on, on that level of uh, of creativity. As big, and the reason why is that in Morbid Angel, he, for example, he could wrote the Chapel of Wolves songs, as far as I know. He said it in the, you can see it in a concert, he plays it with his band the Nocturnus AD, Mike Browning. And he does a pretty awesome rendition of it. He plays it just like in, in Abominations of Desolation. That's that's quite cool. And at the keyboard, so it sounds like Nocturnus playing fucking Morbid Angel. That's fucking awesome. Check it out. And um, uh, Mike Browning starts to have these problems that uh, I was telling that the, the career of Mike Browning was really like... Uh, Full of problems around with people that the that was in the band, you know. And um, he's actually I have I have uh, seen uh, people talking about him. I don't, haven't met him in person, but like, he's a really humble guy, really like a uh, nice guy to be with. And uh, I can see that uh, it's true be, uh, because uh, I can see that also people have that know people from the band. Uh, uh, also say the same, you know. So it's not about a question of that. Mike Browning, during his career, had had all these problems in both Morbid Angel, Nocturnus, and, uh, and lots of things in the in the in the in, in the coming time. But also, uh, he also uh, overcame every single one step, and and still manages to now today to resurface with such a masterpiece as this. That is paradox that's coming. I can feel that this album would be the best album of this year, and. The reason why it comes from now, after Mike Browning quits Morbid Angel. So when when Mike Browning quits Morbid Angel, he's replaced by none other than, uh, well, first was this blonde guy, uh, Wayne something. I can't remember the name of this guy, which was actually, check the demo tapes that this guy uh, recorded with the band. They are pretty fucking awesome. He was actually like... Like a mixture between uh, Pete Sandoval and uh, Mike Browning, the sound. Really, that's the level of... Uh, it's really good. Worth checking it out. And uh, also, the the in that year, uh, Mike is replaced by Pete Sandoval because he uh, Mike had a problem with the Trey Asak thought, personal problem. Uh, as uh, Trey was uh, like... Uh, being behind his back with uh, stealing Mike, uh, borrowing Mike Browning's girlfriend. So, uh, of course, Mike got really fucking pissed off and quit the band. So, and that's the what I think what most of people will do in that case. And uh, imagine in that time he got replaced uh, by a drummer that plays better and faster for more the Angel than him. And uh, I will say that, I will say that because 
Pete Sandoval actually shaped the. He was like the the polish of the diamond. What Morbid Angel became after, like the son of Morbid Angel, uh, evolved thanks to Pete, and that's a fact. But if you hear the Mike Browning era of Morbid Angel, also it's as awesome. It's different, but but it, it couldn't have been with. It would have been a completely different band, Morbid Angel, of maybe more. But um, Pete Sandoval took the best out of Trey, so it sounded really solid. Like, and the album of Altars of Madness, we recorded versions of the Abomination of Desolation, and some new songs that were added. Were um, um, like a fucking hit, and this this album was released in I think 1989 or 1990, not sure, but. Uh, it's quite a, a hit in the in the gonads that you get fucking uh, out of your band. Your girlfriend was cheating with your guitarist because your album got scrapped. The first album got scrapped with uh, the abominations of desolation. Then it's released a fucking album that uh, the drummer is playing like f really like much crazier and all the stuff you know and. Uh, a much more evolved band uh, with the living of Mike Browning. And uh, most of us human beings uh, will enter a phase of frustration with that. But Mike teaches us to behave and act as a phoenix, rising from the ashes. And he fucking stand up himself and form from 1986 when he quit the band till the first album but comes after Altas of Madness or oh, it's Nocturnus the band Nocturnus and Gather's guitarist um, I don't remember the name I, I don't want really I want to just talk about what I remember put in the comments uh, the stuff if 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 this format of video is not good and I should put all the information that you want please let me know in the comments or something like I want to to really flow with this shit this first time this is the first video this is the first video I speak first podcast and i want it to be just how i fucking want man you can after please uh, uh give me feedback so i can make this better and i can make it this a platform for sharing so nocturnus the key is one of the biggest masterpieces releases it released and uh, that shows the what can be done like because um in one way uh Personally, I think uh, Nocturnus the Key outdoes uh, Morbid Angel, Altars of Madness, the content of the the band, the atmosphere of the band. And I will say that Nocturnus is a much more creative in that way that goes things outside the box, creates this sci-fi universe mixed with the ancient ones, like the inspired from the Morbid Angel tales and all the stuff like from Lovecraft and stories. And... Uh, it's really one of the best albums, in my opinion, of that metal. I will say in the top 10 albums, Nocturnus, the key, should, shall be there. And uh, there comes the the thing that uh, Nocturnus was starting to gather uh, some uh, uh, momentum, but uh, we have to remember that... Uh, in these times, uh, record companies will be always like leaving in second place the metal bands. They will always uh, be in favor of uh, of uh, how do you say like pop rock and, and stuff and uh, or pop or the or the whatever thing that can gather as much people as possible. And metal still was something trivial and hard to get people into. Those who got into really loved it, but those who uh, they ain't got it yet it was hard to convince them so the record company just wants to sell fucking records and that's it and uh, Morbid Angel had a much better uh, support from the from the from the label and uh, was getting much more famous from Altars of Madness they, it had more time as well and they were recording videos and uh, and uh, appearing even in MTV as far as I know I think appears in MTV and uh, 
Nocturnos made a, a, a video, but it's it, it's kind of awkward awkward to see uh, Mike Browning playing the drums and singing and uh, struggling like playing the drums. I don't know how to explain. It. Like uh, he his face is he's really visually his face he has like a you know when you do an activity and you get you put like a strange uh, face like I don't know. Sometimes when I draw, you know, I tend to like. Personally, I draw. I like drawing in my free time. I tend to put my jaw in front, like I look like a fucking bulldog. But Mike Browning, like, kind of like has this expression that f opens his mouth and looks at the public or at the camera, you know. With and he's like out of fear playing the the fucking drums, and uh, he's like bringing from his mouth, and, and it doesn't it doesn't compare to the. Uh, I don't know, Morbid Angels videos that he, they appear like with flames behind a fucking uh, woman, you know, like uh, it's really like attractive, uh, cheesy concept, you know, compared to Nocturnus by with Mike Browning uh, close ups while playing the drums, trying to like convince the audience that uh, of something that I don't know. I think that, uh, and that's one of the things that, in my opinion, the, the key. Uh, as an album as well in that time had that uh, it was a, a really co different concept of uh, a band of and as an album as well for the time that uh, not it's not the usual <coughs> that the drummer wanted to be uh, the main force behind the the sound of the band that wants to be like a yeah, for example, other band that I can think of that 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 tried the same is uh, is Autopsy, which uh, is pretty awesome. But uh, in the case of of uh, Nocturnus, it's a really fast paced band. In Autopsy, is like a, a really like a slower, really similar to a bit to to Obituary, but more trashy. But in, in the case of uh, uh, Nocturnus, it's just uh, really really high speed. Uh, 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 velocity, high velocity more than anything because for example if you compare it to Pete Sandoval's style it's much more like Pete Sandoval is like a fucking machine gun you know it's, uh, but uh, in the case of uh, of uh, uh, of Mike of Mike Browning it's much more simple uh, feels he, he has really like simple feels they are effective I like them anyways but the uh, Pete Sandoval, it's they are crazy fills. Like it's it's fucking awesome how he played the drums. It's like all the time in the same uh, speed and uh, con, con, uh, how do you say well, how my Pete Sandoval consistency has the same consistency to play the fucking song in in one sitting uh, with lots of craziness stuff stuff and stuff happening around. And this in this case, uh, Mike uh, is uh, much more about the speed and minimalism in that speed and there is some he plays really really uh, his own style you have to like uh, to appreciate mike uh, compared to pete sandoval you cannot compare them for the capabilities of speed or consistency you have to compare them of the proposal that they're doing in a way like uh, and in that way you will learn to appreciate as well mike's work even for altars of madness sorry from abominations of desolation <coughs> So in the, after the key that comes that is a masterpiece, in, and in why it's a masterpiece, again, it's incorporated atmospheres, new concepts, sci-fi stuff. Sci-fi was already metal, but not in that metal. Not in, the, in And in this way, that incorporates keyboard, keyboards as well for the first time. I forgot to mention that. And really crazy solos, trying to compete a bit with uh, Morbid Angel. In a way, I think he, the, the guitarist from Nocturnus, I will search for it, fuck it. The guitarist from Nocturnus, uh, Mike Davis and uh, Sean McKenney, they play fucking awesome solos in this band, uh, in this album, sorry, in this record. And uh, the whole band sounds really like like fit. And then uh, comes the next album, that's Threshold, I think. think. Which didn't feel quite right because, in my opinion, this album incorporates a new vocalist. Mike is still the drummer, and I can see that the new vocalist uh, started to show the 
the addition of that new vocalist started to show that there was some uh, problems within the band. Okay, what was the problem with Mike's vocals? Did he ask to uh, incorporate a new vocalist? I don't, I don't think so because Mike, after this album, left the band, so it means that there was problems. And that's the biggest thing. For example, in the first album, the key compared to thresholds. I'm talking now. I have heard thresholds a couple of times. Uh, I haven't uh, really enjoyed it because of the vocals, uh, and I should listen it to, me, to to it more because I, I see there is qualities behind. But I, I I I grew up in a way like with uh, Mike Browning's vocals in the key, and in the key it really sounds an atmospheric experience, where Mike Browning sounds. Um, like almost like a cyborg astronaut or angry cyborg dictating orders, like or dictating the story, like something like that. While the music is happening and all, you think like there are spaceships going in speed of light, fighting with each other, something like that, like in the artwork or something. And in the second album, we have a vocalist that that sounds like the average uh, uh, the metal vocalist, the 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 more guttural bo- voices, and he tries a bit to accommodate to. Bo- to the Nocturnus style, but it's not the same. It's it sounds really, really. I don't like that. I, I like Bronis Bogles in Nocturnus. It has to be with Mike Bronis Bogles. It's it's not Nocturnus without him, really. <laughs> and uh, this album for me, uh, what we were talking about, like uh, marks the the end of the era of Mike Browning with Nocturnus as Nocturnus. <coughs> And then comes the well. Then Nocturnus continue with Nocturnus continue without him. They brought a new drummer, released one more album uh, years later, and uh, and uh, Mike Browning is again fucked up by his fucking bandmates in a way. And um, Mike uh, realizes that his bandmates took the name of Nocturnus legally, and uh, the the name that he came up with, the everything, all the image, all the stuff, the histories, everything were now stolen from him. All the concept of the band, everything was taken off. He started the band. He brought the, the musicians after. So he came up with the name Nocturnus. And uh, and the concept as well of the band as well. He came up with that. He was a frontman. He was composing as well the song. So, And then comes the album Paradox. <clears throat> or or better, better, I will, I will make between Paradox what happens. Uh, then no- Mike Browning tries to form Nocturnus and take the name, but he couldn't. His own band, uh, like I say, was fucked up. Even after the split up, he cannot recover the of Nocturnus of the official in brackets Nocturnus because. And uh, there is this uh, thing that uh, he formed uh, Nocturnus uh, uh, AD, like after death, like Nocturnus, like reborn, or something like that. That's cool. And uh, with Mike Browning, but uh, there he had to change, I think, the name to After Death. And uh, for some reason, maybe for personal reasons or to not be. But during that time of After Death, I remember that in in the time that there was not so much popularity of YouTube in the music part, uh, was more like YouTube was more like personal videos of people, not so much about YouTube channels and stuff. <laughs> was much. In those times, in MySpace was for music, I remember. And uh, I will see the page of Mike after death once in a while, and he, I will hear his uh, demos. They were pretty cool. But I, I never got into after death. He, he wanted like, to have a proposal of uh, like a pharaonic type of uh, Arabic uh, Egyptian time, you know, like uh, kind of vibe in the band and sound. And uh, and this is like a almost like a twenty year gap between the the first album, the key, and and now it's almost thirty years actually. Uh, is the when when Mike Browning re- re- changes the band after le- the name of the band after death after like almost twenty years of not releasing almost anything. He just released with the this band after the a couple of demos online and uh, I think one EP or something. And cops with paradox. Which announces that is the sequel to to the the key, and this this all this I wanted to express, and and if I extend myself too much, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make a a quick introduction to Nocturnus to those who haven't listened to it. This is a recommendation video. To Nocturnus, the paradox is really, really, really a sequel of 
of uh, of the key you know much better than the threshold in my opinion much better in some ways than the key in my my opinion in some ways uh, it's, a, it's a it's a it's it's really the best sequel that there could be for for the key really interesting album there are some songs that uh, there are lots of experiments in it for example in the empty chamber there is that uh, pharaonic uh, like Arabic scales in the guitar, like uh, Arabic scales, not pharaonic. What the fuck I'm talking about? But this uh, kind of like Arabic scales. I'm not the that. Uh, if somebody knows, please tell me. But there is a difference that in After Death was, and I can see that that he explored and he brought to Nocturnal uh, sound, and it sounds really spot on. It's it's really awesome. It it stays in my head. It's really catchy uh, that melody of the of the guitar, the vocals as well. Uh, Mike as well in this album sounds. Much more than like a front man. Even the drums sound really loud in this album, in the production, which I find also awesome because uh, Nocturnus was, like I said, in the first uh, album, The Key, and the first uh, in Lake of Fire video uh, that sounds, that looks really like, a, like, I don't know, like in between, you know, it doesn't sound, it doesn't look uh, that the Mike, in the image of Mike as a front man. Which now I think that Mike Browning has achieved to do. That Mike now is the frontman of the band as a drummer and as a vocalist. And it's really fucking awesome. It's really interesting to see that uh, in, in the evolution of this band in particular. And uh, in this album, Mike sounds really loud. It's a bit, I will compare it a bit, I will dare to compare it a bit to the sound of um, Cryptopsy, like Flo Monier, like he sounds the center of the everything. And in this case, yes, it's the drums that are followed by everything else. And I think it fits perfectly the, because the songs are a lot about uh, beats and percussion, you know, it's a lot about that. And the, uh, it feels that everybody's following Mike Browning in the composition. I don't know. I, I felt that at least if you didn't feel that, comment below, comment below, feel with comments. And uh, then uh, there is the song, uh, uh, well, apart from that, the chamber, that uh, that's one of my favorites. Well, the procession of the, of the equinoxes, which is one of the greatest songs I have heard of that metal so far on this, how it starts. It starts really like between something industrial with a really rare beat. Totally recommend it. Fucking listen to it. And then, and then, like switches. You're like, what the fuck is happening with Nocturnus? What? And then switches the melody to the classic Nocturnus again, and then comes back to the craziness. And it's like, but well done. It's not like it's done like for fan service. It's not for the composition of the song itself. The song creates the atmosphere that it intends to do. It's not, okay, here kids, have some candy and fucking like my album. It's had the balls to do something with it. Had the balls to do something. Even with the classic style, it's not the, a copy of the key. It's just the continuation of that creative creativity of that world. It's like, I don't know, you make a comic book and then you, you're going to continue for legal reasons and then you move at the sequel because you could make it and then appears this opportunity and all that accumulation of creativity over the years of frustrations comes into this new album. And fuck, let's make it famous, guys. Let's fucking help Mike Burning regain his lost legacy. Really, this is the time for him. Pete Sandoval and everybody else had their moment of, of uh, joy, you know, the moment of like fucking being famous on the center of the world. Now is the time of Mike Burning. Let's give him a chance. Please buy this album. I will buy it myself. Support the band. Go to their gig if it's close to you. If you like this type of music, of course. And please subscribe. That's it. Hope it wasn't too long. Hope it was fun to listen. And I will appreciate some uh, uh, feedback or commentaries down below. If I am, um, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, or if if my pronunciation of my, or my way of talking also is not good uh, for and discernible, let me know as well. As English is not my native language, as it as it's obvious. I will try my best to fight that thick accent so without further ado thanks you for watching